design shall be included in the restrictive covenants. H, notification of the presence of egg operations in the vicinity. I, a waiver of the right to protest to join a special district for the purpose of providing community water and or wastewater treatment system improvements and or maintenance. J, a restrictive covenant finding the landowner, any heir successors and signs, and all future owners of property within the subdivision, agreeing therein to hold Broadwater County harmless and indemnify Broadwater County from all claims, demands, obligations, suits, causes of action, damages and liability, including the county's costs and attorney's fees, arising in any manner whatsoever out of or relating to the existence, use, operation, repair, and or maintenance of the following. Sub item one, earthquake fault zone and any seismic activity, and sub item two, water availability. Each lot shall be maintained in a clean, attractive, and weed free manner. Noxious weeds, noxious weeds must be pulled, sprayed, or cut prior to maturity. L, a prohibition of the storage of foods, garbage, or continuous feeding of domestic pets outdoors or other activities that creates an attractive nuisance for wildlife species. A, or alfalfa storage and feeding are not prohibited where livestock are permitted. M. Lots shall only allow for livestock if a small acreage livestock management plan is reviewed and approved by the county extension agent and submitted to the county. Each lot owner shall be required to create and adhere to their own livestock management plan. N. All cats and dogs must be restrained, penned, or otherwise under the control of their owner at all times. O. Address numbers shall be clearly marked at the driveway entrance to each lot and be easily identified from the road. 10. Prior to filing the final plat, the following improvements shall be installed or otherwise guaranteed. A, any necessary improvements required by the stormwater drainage plan, weed management plan, fire protection plan, or approach permits, and B, utilities or budding and available to each lot. Electrical and telephone shall be underground. If said improvements are not installed prior to final plat, then the applicant shall enter into a written subdivision improvements agreement with Broadwater County, County, guaranteeing the construction and installation of such improvements, and shall provide an acceptable financial security guarantee in accordance with County Subdivision Regulations Appendix E. 11, prior to filing the final plat, the applicant shall A, Provide proof that all taxes and special assessments assessed and levied on the property are paid for the current tax year, including any past delinquencies, and B, provide documentation, an abstract of title and cladding certificate showing that the applicant is the lawful owner of the property with the apparent authority to subdivide the same, showing the names of lien holders or claimants of record, and the written consent to the subdivision by the owners of the land, if other than the applicant, and any lien holders or claimants of record against the land. The applicant is financially responsible for actual outside engineering, consulting, professional, and or con contracted service fees, etc at the sole discretion of the county for additional review and or final plat approval of the proposed subdivision. Preliminary plat approval of the silos of states that can in various subsequent minor subdivisions shall be enforced for three calendar years. At the end of this period, the governing body may, at the request of the subdivider, extend its approval for a mutually agreed upon period of time. Any mutually agreed upon extension must be in writing and dated and signed by the members of the governing body and the subdivider or subdivider's agent. The governing body may issue more than one extension. A party as defined by 763625MCA, who is aggrieved by a decision of the governing body, may, within 30 days after this decision, appeal to the Broadwater County District Court. Any questions for Nicole? Any questions from the public? I have one, if you don't mind. The growth policy. Yes. Um, even though ours is outdated and the planning board is working on it, does it have a clause that says that this is in effect today mm -hmm. for this? Okay. It, it doesn't ever expire. It okay. simply needs to be updated. Um, but unlike, well, I guess similar to um, the subdivision regulations, even if they were outdated and it had old information in there, um, you would still have to follow the <coughs> but they wouldn't they would be on and void. Okay. So it's a, it's a similar document. It does need to be, it definitely needs to be updated, but that doesn't make it void. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and the other comment I had is, is irrelevant to the subdivision, but it's interesting. We had BLM here for a partners meeting last week, and they are going to be doing some um, potential dinosaur dig or mammal digs um, north of the silo subdivision. Okay. Yeah, they won't tell us when. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of exciting. So, uh, what say you guys? Any comments, concerns, questions? Any concerns? All right. Do we want to grant preliminary approval, or would you like to wait a week or two? All right. Fine with me. As long as we I always ask the same question, they met all the requirements. Yes, sir. I have no problem with going and 
Thank you. All right. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to approve uh, grants, preliminary plat, um, silos, estates at Canyon Ferry. Do we have a second, Franklin? I'll second it. All right. It's been moved and oh, second. We have one question. Corey's talk, talking about going through some piece subdivision beforehand. Is there any reason that he should look at this? Or? Well, there's no drain and drain. And I, I emailed him um, two weeks before the public hearing, actually at the same time that I sent out the certified letters to adjacent landowners. I also sent Corey an email, mm -hmm. and I copied each of you, I believe, in that email, um, so that he had the opportunity <coughs> to pick up the public copy. Um, I'm reluctant to, to walk up to his office and sit down and make time with him because I, I think that would slow the process down. You know that? But I, I let him know where the public copy was and when this all was occurring. Okay, that's fine. Right. Because I know he's made that remark mm -hmm. here a while back. Mm -hmm. Did we vote yet? No. It's been moved and seconded. All right. Um, so it's been moved and seconded to grant preliminary plaque to Silos Estates of Canyon Ferry, subsequent minor subdivision. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. This is a pretty simple one. I like these. Me too. Yes. Oh, sorry. Do you want this? Yeah, unless you find you want to keep it for any reason if you want no. to. <laughs> it, 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 I, I always keep a copy have. in yeah, my um, master it. file. Yeah. But if you ever want to keep, keep it, my... absolutely. Thank you. I'll go through a little bit. Absolutely. A little moment, momento. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're, they're handy. Um, I lend them out to the public as well. Uh, you know, if, if someone comes in and they don't want to hire a representative or someone to help them with the process, they're very handy to be able to hand them that and lend it to them. Thank you. Uh, to look through. So mm -hmm. I do I do recycle them and I do reuse them. Or the developer can always request to have them back. But, um, and also I guess while we're talking about it, I just I want you to know that that is that is my stance and that is my process. Uh, you three are my bosses and so you can tell me if you want me to behave differently in moving forward with these subdivisions. But I have a process and I have guidelines set forth by state law on how I have to re review a development. Um, our county attorney seemingly is no different than any other member of the public in my eyes. I make the public copy available. I let him know that it's available. If he wants to look at it, he is more than welcome to make time with me, and I will make sure I make time for him to discuss it. But I'm not going to um, change the process unless you tell me differently. Because, again, you are my bosses. And I have, I have state law that I have to follow. Once the development falls uh, in my lap, I have five days to look through it and make sure everything is there. That's called element review. Um, once they, once I, I can determine that everything is in the application, we move into what's called sufficiency review, and I have 15 working days. Um, at that point, I then can move it on to the, uh, the planning board. But it, the process moves quite quickly once an application comes, um, and I have to stick to those guidelines. So I'm reluctant to make allowances um, unless you tell me to. And I think that you're open to talk to anybody at any time. Absolutely. Is the bottom line here. Any member of the county, any member of the public can come and talk to you about a subdivision. And that becomes our responsibilities too. So um, thank you for that. I, I do think it's a process that works. I do, um, I talked to Tara the other day, Tara uh, the Pew, and she suggested that after the beginning of the new year when we have a new county commissioner on board, and since we do have a relatively new county attorney, and since there has been some strife, that we have a planning board training. And the commission should attend in full, uh, county attorney's office should attend, and then the planning board and planning department. Perfect. I think that would be a good use of our time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and she thought a refresher would be good for everybody. You guys know what you're doing, but to educate the rest of us and to also educate the public. Is well, and, and, you know, I, I think that's a fabulous idea, and I've said this before in the past, just because we're doing it one way and it works that way doesn't mean it's always the right way. I'm always open to suggestions if they work, if if it's for the good of the public. Yes, if, if it's just a new process, just, just because. I mean, I guess I need, I need explanation um, before I'm going to change how I do things. So. 
anyway, yeah, I think that would be fantastic because we may, we may be missing something. I may be missing something. And you don't know what you don't know until you're informed of, of you know, maybe something that you're overlooking. So, Absolutely. And it's important for us commissioners, you know, this is our responsibility to know mm -hmm. the regulations to be able to say everything's been covered by Nicole. To just put it all on, on her, it falls on us. So um, I think a training would be good for the, the commission Perfect. as well. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Nice work. Thank you. Um, and can I ask a question? I don't know if you can answer that for me here or not. How are we moving forward on uh, the, the suit that's, that's been brought forward for Harbor County? I came into the meeting, um, I thought I was on time, and I know that you started earlier uh, at the last discussion on Wednesday. Oh. And so I think I missed a big chunk of it, and I wasn't going to make anyone repeat it, but this is not the appropriate place for me to ask that question. No, you're, it's, uh, what we talked about was public. So um, we have an attorney who has been hired by MAKO. Okay. And I think his name is Alan McCormick. Um, he, uh, he will be representing the county, and he will meet with us as a group. And that group is the planning board, planning department, and the county commission. Okay. Those will be closed door meetings because litigation um, is allowed to be private to protect the, the community. So, um, Corey suggested that maybe there may need to be some, um, uh, a, like a team put together, or we can do it as a whole. It's going to be up to, I think, the, the different boards okay. involved. Um, he is going to be bringing your gals Corey file to today's 1.30 as well as mine, and your uh, files as well, I would assume. Okay. Um, and we expect to be meeting with the attorney sooner rather than later. So mm -hmm. hopefully end of this month, beginning of next month. Okay. We have 42 days because apparently it gets added 21 twice. I'm not sure what that's about, but district court said 21, but for some reason we get to, to double it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and it was filed June 29th against the county, um, and we actually found out about it October 21st. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think that was the whole the whole part. Did I miss anything, Ann? Okay. I think the reason why we get extra the way, if I remember correctly, is the way they served us gives us yeah gives us X amount of more days. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, you will be informed as soon as there is a meeting, um, and, and we'll ask you to bring the planning board, and mm -hmm. we'll all be there. And okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you again. You. And you're also welcome to stay if you would like to listen to mail. <laughs> also <laughs> <ready not. laughs> All right, we have claims. These are the approved claims from last week in the amount of $53,710.22. Right, we'll make a motion to pay the approved claims of $53,710.22. Yeah, it's been moved and seconded to pay the approved claims in the amount of $53,710.22. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. After today's 2 o'clock, we are going to be meeting with um, Debbie, or at least have paperwork from Debbie and Michelle and Doug. Um, setting the mills for the recertification for the Northwestern Energy Settlement. So just to let you guys know, um, next we have, um, this is our quarterly report from MBAC. I don't know if you're aware of this, Nick, but there's some turn lanes at the southern end of the county. There was an issue where a developer pledged a certain amount of money with his bank over a period of time. MDT took longer than that time to construct the turn lane. The agreement was with the county, because that's how the law works. MDT doesn't make uh, agreements with developers. So at the end of this, we had no teeth with the developer to pay for that turn lane. 
the developer, who was Greg Show, actually um, agreed to work with Sean Higley and MBAC, Mark Menke, and put together a repayment plan. The county fronted the 150000 to pay for the turn lane. Greg Show is paying us back, and it, so far he's paid us uh, just over $15,000 in interest, and at the end of it we'll pay us $28,000 in interest. So by working with MBAC, they made no money on it. Um, we actually brought in another $28,000 for the county. So this is the revolving loan fund report, and it also has Great Shows report in there. you a copy already. Um, we had a meeting with the Montana Hospital Association last Thursday and Bob Olson, who's an expert on the IGP, the Intergovernmental Transfer, came down to um, address some issues. This is your letter mm -hmm. that you wrote. Um, so that we were clear. And I want to share, we're going to talk about this, I would think, a little bit at 1.30 with Corey, but I wanted to share just a couple of points from the letter um, I asked Bob if he would put what he had told us in that meeting in writing. I took notes, but it's so much better coming from him. So, um, first of all, he thanked us for the opportunity um, to meet with Mr. Campbell, Brad, Kyle Hopstead, and County Attorney Corey Swanson. And this was to provide you with some additional background about the Intergovernmental Transfer, the IGT program that helps fund Montana Medicaid Nursing Home Services. To begin, it has not been uncommon for various county commissioners to step back from the IGT program to learn more about the details of using county or tax district funds to help increase Medicare, Medicaid payments. Commissioners need to know that they are using their resources in accordance with state and federal laws and regulations. Montana's IGT program does in fact meet all of the requirements, and I have no doubt that Mr. Swanson will confirm that for the commissioners. By way of background about the IGT programs, Medicaid is a health program with a joint financing partnership between states and the federal government enacted in 1965. The federal government essentially provides for state administration of the program consistent with federal statutory requirements. Among the state's prerogatives are the payment rates and coverage requirements for Medicaid, excuse me, medical providers including nursing homes. The federal government provides its share of funding to the state for benefits paid for Medicaid eligible persons. States provide the balance of the payment for its resource. State funding includes general funds, state special revenue, taxes levied on hospitals and nursing homes, as well as funding contributed underneath the IGT program by counties. Intergovernmental transfers are a transfer of funds from another government entity, i.e. a county, to the state Medicaid agency, in our case it's DPHHS. The ability of a state to use IGT to fund their Medicaid program is recognized in statute um, and the Social Security Act. IGT program used to fund the nursing homes has been around since the early 1990s and was specifically approved by the federal government upon its inception. Further federal agencies routinely audit the program to assure that the state complies with federal requirements. Montana legislature also reviews the program and appropriations of the funding to Medicaid as part of the state budget process every two years. Broadwater County is invited to participate in the IGT program because the facility ownership by because of the facility ownership by the tax district. Without that ownership interest, the county would not be invited to fund the IGT program. Those who do participate do so in part because local tax dollars can't be levied to boost financial support in the local facility. To the questions posed by the commissioners, Townsend Health Systems is qualified to receive funds from Montana Medicaid via the IGT program. All of Montana's nursing homes receive a share of the IGT payment based upon their Medicaid utilization. Montana Medicaid is well aware of the tax status of Townsend Health Systems as this information is collected by the department as part of their enrollment in the Medicaid program. The department 
He is also aware of the ownership of the physical plant, which is the reason for the invitation to the county to participate in the IGT program. For this reason, no misrepresentation to the department has occurred. Remember, the county contribu contributes its, fund, its funds to the state, not the nursing home. By doing so, the state is able to leverage that money to increase Medicaid payments to all nursing homes. Townsend Health Systems is not in violation of any state or federal laws or regulations and therefore won't face recovery of Medicaid IGT payments. And then he went through each of the questions that we have here. Um, does Broadwater Health Center, as a private not-for-profit corporation, a non-local government entity, qualify to participate? And the answer is yes, because actually what Bob said, and it's the, we've kind of known this, those of us were kind of immersed in the whole near failure of the hospital, but Bob put it in the most simple terms that anybody has to date. The facility, the equipment within the facility, and the job of the facility, as well as the buildings and the property, are county. It's a county facility. So if THS left us tomorrow, the equipment, by extension the employees, and the patients would be the responsibility of the county. The whole kit and caboodle. And if, um, if you ever decide to go to a conference, uh, for MACO, which is open to the public, you will find that the commissioners dealing with having to manage their own nursing homes or hospitals are pulling their hair out because it's a nightmare. Um, so the first answer Bob said is a simple yes. Um, and then uh, has BHC misrepresented itself? No, because of his, his definition. Um, has BHC violated any federal or state law? No. And does BHC have to return any IGT funds? And no. And he answered those a little bit more in length in the letter. But it, it was an excellent meeting with him, and it was amazing how simple he put this complicated issue. But he said we're not the first commission to um, back off and say, wait a minute, we need some more clarity on this. And I think Corey has his <coughs> letter done. Uh, I talked with him, I think, on Friday um, after the meeting. The meeting was Thursday. Yeah. So Friday, I talked with him um, about it, and I believe he has his response uh, ready. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but um, I think um, I think we're uh, headed in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was really a good meeting. Um, he did say in the meeting that he didn't think he'd even need to go to the AGs because it was clear again. Bob had just an uncanny knack of being very simple and straightforward. So it was a good meeting. Um, so as far as mail, that's it. That's it. Um, we can break for lunch unless we have somebody who has anything to offer. Are you just here, Brandon, or do you have anything for us? I have, you know, I've got on the agenda for um, next Monday, but it was about our janitor. Um, a janitor issue, so I don't know if I really need to be on there or. Have you talked to Mike? I have not. You I know we got a bid from the person that um, currently goes and cleans the courthouse. I didn't know if that comes out of his or how that works. If, if you guys want to contract, it would come out of yours. If you want to work with Mike, he has some ideas. Okay. So, what I would suggest is either you or you and Wynn talk to Mike and then come and see us as a team unless you want to just do your own thing. So I would suggest, though, definitely talk to Mike before you make that decision. Okay. So should I stay on the agenda then, or just...? Uh, yeah. Okay. Talk to Mike today. Uh, he's not in today, is he? Yeah, he was is here. He? he was here. Yeah. Okay, he was going to take today off. Um, talk to him today and let me know by 5 for the agenda. Okay. If you guys want to come talk to us, that would be fine. Um, and if, depending on what you guys talk about, if you guys just do it on your own, that's fine, too. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, gentlemen, anything from you two before lunch? All right. Anything more from the commission? No. All right. We're re recessed until 9.30.